Welcome back to the True Sports Physical Therapy Podcast, a show that's by sports PTs and for sports PT professionals. We're here to accelerate growth in your sports PT career while giving you the tools to provide your athletes with game-changing results. Here's your host, sports physical therapist and practice owner, Dr. Yoni Rosenblatt. Welcome back to the True Sports Physical Therapy Podcast. We got Mike Giunta with us today, one of my favorite dudes in the space. So I'm really excited to have you on. Um, I've known you for a few years now. I don't even remember how um, we crossed paths. Oh, maybe I do. It was, it was about the PLL. But just always handled yourself and carried yourself so professionally. Uh, there's, there's just so easy to get along with you, Mike. Um, and so it's been great kind of staying in touch over these years. I want you to share with this audience of sports PTs how you got to where you are. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's, it's always great to connect with you. And, and we've definitely, you know, formed a friendship over, over the bunch of years that, that we've known each other and, and been able to do some cool things um, professionally. And, you know, I think that that really is the, the you know, the, the crux of just believing in what we we think physical therapy should be and working towards that every day um you know those those are important things when you know i think about being a sports pt and and being involved in this practice it's really just kind of you know always going towards that heading um and and making sure that that we don't sacrifice anything else so great to be here uh thanks for having me on and um you know to to your main question about how I got to where I was today, you know, I was, I was probably like a lot of, um, you know, people coming out of school right now where, um, I, I wanted to work with the team, wanted to work in pro sports, you know, that sort of thing, um, was near the tail end of PT school, trying to decide what I wanted to do, whether or not to stay on the East coast, whether or not to, to move to a warmer, uh, area in California and ultimately decided that I wanted to get involved with a small practice who wanted to grow, um, and, and found a place called evolution physical therapy in Los Angeles, uh, which had one clinic, um, but definitely, a you know, big desire to grow and um, move this profession forward. So joined up that group um, in, in 2011. Um, and over the course of the next seven years, was able to help it grow uh, to about five clinics. Uh, and in 2018, I got the opportunity to take over the clinic, clinic as a whole um, by way of acquisition, uh, which, which was a super fun process to go through. And, you know, obviously, you know, we, we don't go through a ton of business stuff when we're in school. A lot of people out there know that. So to dabble in that side of things and, and go through that process, um, you know, I think was super interesting and, and, and certainly a learning experience. Simultaneously, you know, I also partnered up uh, with uh, with a group in Connecticut uh, where we started opening clinics there in 2018. Um, and then in 2020, started having conversations with a group out in Denver uh, where, you know, I, I just loved kind of the, the Colorado area for, for many years. I've been doing the Burton U.S. Open of snowboarding for about 10 years um, and, and fortunately got linked up with, with this other group through my connections at the PLL. Um, and, you know, partnered with them there at, at, towards the end of 2020, which has been really fun. So um, been, been a cool pathway, um, you know, s- certainly uh, did not make a five year plan and then, uh, you know, hit the nail on the head right, r- right on it. Because, you know, two years after I, I acquired my business in, in 2018, we kind of went through a rough patch of, of 2021, 2020, uh, 2020, 2021, uh, w- which everybody is fully aware of. Um, but ever since just been kind of going full steam ahead and, and, and going for it. It's been, it's been awesome to watch from afar and then get some of the insight. Now you went about it a little bit differently than I did as you start talking about some of these acquisitions, but before you did that, it sounded like you grew from one to five. Walk me through that. What, what was the secret to your success in taking one clinic and, and growing to five before you went even further? I, I think it was really listening internally to to our physical therapists and and the people who are involved in the company and and growing organically. I, I think that that was really important. It, it was never you know kind of 
putting a finger on a map and saying we need to open up a location here because we want to. It, it was always opportunistic, um, you know, going to a place that somebody else in our company, you know, lived near or had a community that they wanted to grow and, and be a part of. Um, and we just kind of supported and invested the people uh, that were really important to us. So so our first expansion was actually into the, the Beverly Hills area. Um, and then from there, we went, um, actually teamed up with a physician uh, in kind of like the Brentwood, West LA area. Uh, really good situation there of, of people who really believed in physical therapy. Um, then we opened kind of a, another flagship down in, in the South Bay area, uh, just south of LAX Airport in, in Hawthorne, California, uh, where we were really able to, you know, establish ourselves as, as kind of a, a really solid sports PT clinic down there in the area, which, which didn't have a ton of that going on. Um, and then, you know, just kind of like rinse and repeated that model um, of, of really making sure that we had a good solid base to, you know, go off of culturally. I, I think that it was just really important that we didn't lose that side of things by growing too quickly. Yeah, you mentioned developing a name as being the go-to sports PT um, and, and what culture looks like and what that practice looks like. Tell me what it's like when I walk into Evolution Physical Therapy. What's the model? What's the feel? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. It's it's a bunch of people who are having fun going to work every day. You know, I think that that's something that we really preach, really from our interview process all the way through, and and we make people go through several, you know, different iterations of of you know our our interview process, talking to several people, and we make sure that both sides really understand what they're going to get uh, when they work for Ev Evolution Physical Therapy. And then that really shines through when you walk in any of our clinics. We're, we're just very transparent about who we are, uh, what our goals are, what our culture is. Um, and we look for physical therapists who are just, you know, super passionate uh, about what they're doing every day. And, and, you know, it's one thing to be passionate about being a physical therapist, but it's, it's another thing to about be finding what your passion is about in the world of physical therapy and then doing that. There's there's so many orthopedic physical therapists out there. There's so many people who call themselves sports PTs out there. Um, but, you know, the, the percentage of their actual uh, caseload that's working in sports is actually very minimal, right? Um, and, and so if you're going to do that, we really want to support you in finding that population that you want to work with and then and trying to get it to a point where like 70% of your caseload is, is really treating that type of a person. And so that doesn't, for us, that doesn't have to be, you know, athletes, right? And that's, that's totally fine. Um, but we really want our physical therapists to figure out what that is and then go for it. That's really cool that, that you're able to support your staff and your clinicians like that. Um, tell me though, like boil it down and make it clear who is evolution physical therapy and who is Mike Gianta? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I think we're evolution physical therapy is a group who really wants to change the perception of physical therapy. And that's, that's kind of what what our motto is what we talk about at, at most of our meetings and, and how we're going to do this. I, you know, I think there's a very particular idea of what, you know, traditional physical therapy is, uh, what that looks like. Um, we, we are we look like, we smell like, we feel like um, when you walk into one of our clinics, much more what people would traditionally think of as a gym. Um, and, and that's how we want it. Um, we we want to really push those boundaries and, and obviously be in the medical space because that's really important, but have the, have the look and feel of a place where, you know, people know that they can get better. They're having fun. They're listening to music. Uh, they're enjoying themselves. Um, and, and that's, that's not just the patients, that's the physical therapists themselves. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's what I am. That's who I am. You know, I got, I had my roots in strength and conditioning coming through PT school, doing speed training with pre speed, speed school, you know, getting guys ready for the NFL combine, you know, that sort of thing, just kind of being in that atmosphere, being around it all the time. Um, and, and certainly wanted to bring that to any clinic that I was involved with. Um, I, I also kind of let go of the idea of working for a team and, and figured out, you know, how to basically bring those athletes to me in my clinic. I felt like that would be a, a much better lifestyle um, going forward. And, and those people who have traveled with a team, which I have too, you know, I, I traveled three straight summers with the Premier Lacrosse League, um, you know, th that travel's grueling. Like people, 
people know about. They talk about it, right? It's, it's, it's no secret. And I commend every person that wants to do that for, for long periods of time. For me, I think it was really important to figure out, you know, how to balance the, the in-clinic stuff with the, you know, working with those top-level athletes. Uh, and I've been very fortunate in my career to travel all around the world doing physical therapy, uh, travel all around the United States doing physical therapy, um, and, you know, but still had my home base and, and, and never really had to be, you know, really stressed out about that. I knew you would have an awesome answer for that because it's so clear that you know who Mike Gianta is and, like, your ability to see, hey, what do I want and, and how do I craft that? And you did a great job of kind of explaining that. Like, you want that professional athlete, that elite level sports rehab, but you also want to be you, right? You want to have time to be you and you want to be in your home base. And um, I think that really bleeds through. Holy cow, if I want to work at Evolution Physical Therapy. It sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and, and Yoni, to be honest, like at, at this point, I tell all my physical therapists, you know, this is, you know, I, I tell them that same story. I've been fortunate to do these things that I've, I've done in, in physical therapy. I'm actually more passionate now about helping them find what I was able to find. Right. And, and that is being you, that is being true to who you are, true to who you want to treat. Um, and for me, it just, it's so exciting when, you know, the, the physical therapist kind of gets involved in that group that they're really interested in, in being involved with and they start seeing patients from them and they're really enjoying, you know, what they're doing every day or they're telling stories about this case that they had, you know, because they, they went and they started coaching the soccer team and now they're seeing, you know, patients from that team. Um, it, it, it's just really fun, man. It's, it's, um, it's a fun way to go about um, kind of the business side um, because, you know, you, you, at the end of the day, you can only treat as many patients as you you, you can treat personally, but when you have this company of, of like-minded individuals who are doing that, um, I think you get to experience at a whole different level. So these career ladders that you've created within evolution physical therapy to allow the therapist to achieve their desired goals or their stated goals, um, walk me through how you came about, number one, the need for that, and then number two, how did you start acting upon those things and creating those ladders? Yeah, I think I think it was experiential for me as I was going through um, being a part of a growing company and realizing that there was a lot of different hats that you have to wear. Um, and also, when you look in the mirror, you realize that you're not you're not necessarily great at every single one of those things. Um, you know, I, I read, um, you know, a, a book a long time ago. Um, well, a, a, a series of a couple of different books that, that really helped me get to, you know, the, the the ultimate idea of doing what I've, I've been doing as far as building these career ladders, you know, first and foremost was um, some of the Jocko Willing books um, as far as understanding decentralized command and, you know, how that, how that really works. And that's really how I've built my company throughout the course of the years is by finding what people are really good at, um, allowing them to, to do those things, um, but also understanding who they're not, uh, who I'm not, and making sure that we get really great people um, in in those roles as well. And so, you know, over the course of the years, I just kind of realized that, number one, can't do this all myself, need really good, great people around me, need to find people who are better than me at a lot of different things and, and make sure that we're elevating those positions. Um, and then also understanding that not every position is for every one person. And if we kind of hit roadblocks as far as putting somebody in a position that, you know, either they just thought that they should be in that position because they've been with the company for a long time, or they feel like that's the, you know, only way to grow that that's going to be problematic for a growing company as well. Um, and so to kind of put a, a few more specifics um, on that, you know, I, I don't believe that the only way up in a physical therapy clinic should be uh, to be a clinical director. Uh, I just, it's just something that I fundamentally disagree with. I think the clinical director really should be somebody who, you know, enjoys managing, who has, um, you know, obviously the desire to, to understand the, the business side of things, how things work, um, the ability to lead other people, um, the ability to understand and, and be empathetic towards not just their patient, but also their employees. And I think that those are, you know, certainly a different, um, 
that that's a different skill set that some people have and others don't. I think what you find if if that's the only way up, you get a lot of people who have really no business being managers who are the managers of the clinic, and that just frustrates everybody else that that are around them. Um, so so we're very crystal clear with our employees that hey, listen, like you know, don't think that the only way to grow this company is to be a clinical director. We have other things for you to be able to do. Let's figure out what those are and and let's make sure that we have them. And people in our company can attest, you know, a, a, a lot of our, you know, for example, we, we have people who are really taking like a mentorship path. A lot of those mentors, you know, would say like, I have, I have no desire, no one to be a clinical director. And same thing with clinical directors. They say, hey, I have no desire, no one to, to be a mentor. So um, in, in that way, in the way that we use it uh, contextually in our company. So I think it's, it's, it's really cool to create these different ladders and pathways so people never feel stuck. Yeah, I've definitely seen that and very transparently totally made that mistake before where it was like, oh, you're a great clinician. It must be you're going to be a great CD or clinic director. And that has blown up. In my face. <laughs> yeah. And by the, by the way, like blew up in this. Not the space. case. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely not the case. Yeah. Um, so, so I definitely had to, to learn, unfortunately, that the hard way. Give me another career ladder. So say I'm working at Evolution Physical Therapy. I'm a great clinician. You don't think that I'm the ideal clinic director. What else can I do for you? So there, there's several others. So I, I alluded to one there uh, a minute ago, but that's our mentorship pathway. And we, we call them all pathways. I mean, it's a, you know, we're always adding to this and having people come up with, um, you know, things that, you know, we, we, there's some, might be something really cool out there that we don't, don't even know about to, to mm -hmm. take that uh, wedding crashers line. That, that was yeah. freaking hilarious. Um, but, you know, the, the so first one is the, that mentorship that. pathway. This, this is something where. <laughs> Thank God you said that because I'm like, am I the only one thinking about welfare? This is a safe space, right? <laughs> okay, got, no one's this listening. This is a safe space, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so, um, so that mentorship pathway, a really important one, you know, really important one for the company. It's, it's people who want to mentor less experienced physical therapists, people who have really, you know, taken – you know, the educational side by the horns. Um, they're obviously very skilled clinicians. They're people who love to teach. Um, I can tell you from my experience, like I've taken students in, in my, you know, career over time. And it's, it's certainly nothing against the students that I taught, but it's not something that I was like really drawn to. Like, I just felt like, you know, I, I was always kind of doing my own thing. And then I had this other person there that I also had to, you know, kind of help along. And, you know, I felt like I was, my, my time was better spent doing some other things at the time. So I have a lot of, you know, respect, trust, and admiration for the people who uh, want to enter that mentorship pathway because they, they just have this, like, selflessness, you know, about them that they, they want to teach others, they want to help others grow and, you know, do these things, and they're willing to sit there and spend the time, especially when it's super frustrating when somebody's just not getting something to teach them and, you know, help them along the way. So, so that's a really cool one. Um, we, so that, you know, have an analytics. Mike, Mike, is that, sorry, is that different than um, a clinical instructor? Same thing. They're just taking students. You just call them clinical mentors. So, so I think it's, it's under the same roof. Um, you know, certain physical therapists would rather take students than have a actual less experienced physical therapist. And I think that those are also two skill, two different skill sets, right? Um, you know, taking a student is, is, is one thing. We, we actually have a formal mentoring uh, process in our company. So, you know, if you're entering our company as a new grad, we have a very particular thing that you're going through over the course of the first year. And then we kind of tail off, you know, after that and do some different things. Um, but you know, we, we make sure that the people who are our mentors really are passionate about that. And then the same with our clinical instructors, you know, you have to want to take a student. Um, you really do. And I think that some of those clinical instructors can actually mature into more of these mentors um, down the line as they develop those skills on students, then they can kind of transfer those skills to, to the more less experienced physical therapists as they gain their own experience. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question that I think is burning in the listener's mind. And that is, Mike, if I'm working for you and I become a CI or clinical mentor, do I make more money? Doesn't make a difference. Um, you know, in, in no? most ways, it, it really, no? eh, 
it, you do not necessarily make more money or less money depending on what pathway that you, uh, okay. that you choose. Um, and, and that goes for the other pathways too. You know, we, we have people who just want to pursue, um, they just want to see patients all day, right? Like they don't like, cause we give people out of their time, time out of their schedules to do this. And so every, everything has an importance. Everything has a value. There's people who are like, yeah, I don't want to mentor. I don't want to be a clinical director and manage people, but I want to see patients all day. And I want to pursue my OCS. I want to pursue my SCS. I want to do all these things. Again, super valuable to the company. If you can be loyal to the company and be with us for, for 10 years, um, you know, that's awesome. And, and that might come, you know, with the same, you know, pay rate as somebody who is a clinical director or a mentor or an analyst or, you know, any number of these, um, you know, positions that we might create throughout the company. Um, it's, it's, it, it's really working to eliminate that ceiling in what is physical therapy as far as salaries go. I think we need to, you know, drop the stigma behind talking about that. Like it, it shouldn't be a secret that physical therapists make between, Seventy and a hundred thousand dollars a year, right? Like it's, it, you know, certainly there's outliers um, on on both directions, um, but you know, we we need to make sure that we're talking about that, and then talking about some pathways. You know, if if you want to earn more, great. Like, let's talk about how you can do that. Um, if if you're kind of cool where you are, okay, then we're going to talk about how you know you maintain that. You know, so I think it's about that transparency in your company and and making sure that you're having you know, albeit sometimes difficult conversations with people, um, I, you know, I think that they're better off for, for going through and, and having somebody give them that real talk. Yeah, I, lo I love the way you say that because I think it's so important. I think we got to get out of the mindset of um, a therapist saying, I feel like I am worth X, right? Um, well, I always ask the question, okay, wh why do you feel that way and why are you worth more than someone else who's doing the exact same job. So we pay for roles, right, and responsibilities. Now, this role gets paid this. That role gets paid that. You want to come up with a different role? Thank you. That is awesome. And, like, I'm totally flexible and open. Yeah. Just bring value. I, I would love to pay you for the value that you're bringing. And it sounds like that's what's going on um, at Evolution where the value, you're absolutely right, the OCS, the SCS, all that stuff is bringing value. So is mentorship. Um, I'm sure the analytics, you're going to tell me exactly what that means exactly, but it's bringing a certain type of value. Um, and so with that comes reimbursement or compensation, right? Um, tell me about this analytics position. That sounds cool. Yeah, it, it's, uh, again, another one that we've kind of developed over time based off of, um, you know, we, we've done some some just, uh, I guess, personality testing, uh, not personality is kind of the wrong word, um, professional development testing with um, most of our physical therapists, especially the ones in, in leadership roles in our country or in our company, and um, start to understand a little bit more about like how they work and, and what they're most suited towards. Um, and so, so we had kind of this analytics role come up and it's really somebody who really likes to dig into the numbers, you know, just somebody who just like wants data in their face all day is really comfortable using Excel spreadsheets and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and it's been a role that's been very useful in helping us understand all these different reports that our EMR system, you know, spit out at us like it, they're not all just clear like use this for x right and then do this you know for y you kind of have to like dig into them a little bit more and understand them a little bit better um and you know to me there's there's no better person to do that than a physical therapist because they can understand it from the clinical side of things and how that relates back to the business so we use this uh, analytical um position both for our physical therapists and, and kind of how to develop them, how to identify if maybe there's, you know, problems in their, in their clinical skill set that we need to, you know, go over them a little bit more, increase their mentorship, you know, something like that. We also use it for our front office staff. You know, how, how are we performing there? How can we do a little better? How are we talking with patients? Um, you know, and I, I think it just helps us identify those things um, a little sooner than what we, you know, have, in the past. I mean, I, I, I'm not shy to say for myself as a physical therapist, and I'm pretty open with this about even, even in my interviews, I'll, I'll tell new grads this story that it took me about four years, man. Like, I don't know how long it took you. Um, but there was like a very like pivotal point in my career where so many patients were canceling off my schedule. And like, I would like overload my schedule because I knew people were canceling. And then I kind of like figure out how to 
you know, get to a, a certain number of people that I was comfortable seeing. And I used to like blame the patient, like, oh, I just got a bunch of shitty patients, like what's going on? Um, and then I like looked in the mirror and I was like, no, Mike, it's something that you're doing, you know, that's, that's causing this to happen and causing people to cancel off your schedule. And there was a couple little tweaks that I made in, you know, my evaluation process and my treatment style. And all of a sudden, like nobody was canceling off my schedule. And, you know, I, you know, I didn't get any formal mentorship. Um, you know, I was kind of just learning from the people around me. I'm sure, I, you know, I don't know if, if you went through that or if you got mentorship, but I know there's a lot of people out there who didn't. Um, and so if there's any way that we can close that gap for people, whereas like if it took me four years, but it takes somebody else a year or two years or something like that, that's such a big win, you know, because it, it's not just a win for the company, but it's, it's a win for the patients. You know, it's, you know, how many people who do I look back on? I'm like, oh, crap. Knowing what I knew now, I would have done X, Y, and Z, and I would have got so, so much better, so much quicker, um, you know, but hindsight's twenty twenty, and we just have to learn and, and go through that process. It is. Um, you're describing what Tim Stone, uh, one of my favorite physical therapists, refers to as the snow day test. When, awesome guy. Have in California, <laughs> right? But like when yeah, – awesome guy. When it snows, are your patients showing or are they just so quick to fall off? And, and how do you develop right. – whether it's the clinical acumen or the interpersonal acumen, how do you be in that per- – between those people's ears – to say, man, I want to be there. I want to be at True Sports or at Evolution with Tim, with Mike, so that I'm getting care. So I think that's what you're describing. I love the way you put it with um, how many more patients are you going to help if they actually show, right? And also, how, many, how much are you going to help that therapist, Mike? Like, if you can teach that therapist how to lessen that learning curve as to how to get to the Mike with four years experience, what a service you're doing to your therapist. So uh, that's really awesome. I'm dying to know those tidbits. W- what did you change? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of times it comes down to soft skills, right? Like we all, we all take the, you know, relatively similar, similar exams, like as your entry, entry way into to physical therapist, um, you kind of learn your processes, you learn your, you know, your rules that you follow as, as you're going through. But what you're talking about that snow day test, like I think that that really comes down to instilling that confidence in your patient that you're their person, you're there to help them get better uh, and they need to trust you, you know? And I, and I think that that comes down to a lot of, a lot of soft skills that unfortunately, you know, we, we don't really develop much in school. You know, I think you start to develop them a little bit on your, in your clinical rotations. Um, but so experience you, like, is what does that for you. But you looked in that mirror four years in. You said, I got to change a couple things. What were those things? How did you build that trust? You remember? I, I, yeah, absolutely. It, it started in the evaluation. Uh, and, and for me, it was laying out the plan of care on day one for somebody. I think that that was the single most important thing that I did. Um, because I think before that, I was not that I was guessing, but like, I was kind of like taking things as they come, you know, and, and I, you know, you hear quarterbacks or point guards talk about this all the time, whether they're in the NFL or NBA, like the game slows down for them as they get more experience. I think that that's what started to happen for me. Like the game slowed down for me a little bit. And I was able to see past that initial, like past the first pass, so to speak. Um, And I would explain that to patients and I would say, Hey, here's what we're going to do on day one. Here's what we're going to do in the first couple of weeks. When you hit this milestone, I'm going to move you on to this. Um, And then we're going to keep on going from there. And that for me actually led them all the way through um, joining one of our fitness services. And uh, you know, again, for, for the people out there that don't know much about evolution, physical therapy, how we work, but we're not, we're generally not just the physical therapy side. We're also the fitness side as well, where we have group memberships, personal training, Pilates, you know, a bunch of different ancillary services. And I would walk people through that whole process. So by the time we got there and it was time to say like, Hey, I think you should, you know, grab one of these fitness memberships and continue on with our personal trainers. I had already pre-programmed that in their mind that that is actually what success meant. Success was not just getting out of pain. Success was actually making it all the way into one of our ancillary services that now they continue on forever. I walk into, you know, some of my clinics now and I see patients in there who I treated in my first, second, third year out of physical therapists who are still coming as a group class member. Um, And, you know, that's, 
13, 14 years ago, right? So like, yeah. I mean, that, that's such an awesome thing to, to see and, and stay connected to those people. Yeah, that, that's, that's, a, that's great advice, man. That, that is great advice. And I think if there's those listening at home, like if there's one thing you can take away, that explanation and the way you encapsulate the entire plan of care is so crucial. I would add one piece to that maybe, which would be if you can tell them, here are the potential obstacles to your success right? Uh, you don't get that knee straight. Here's what could happen. And, and then they can then recall, they could see it coming, right? It's almost like you're predicting. And because you're predicting yeah. what's going to happen, you're going to pull down those barriers to get in. Um, that's, that, that just further enhances and increases and lets the patient know like, hey, it doesn't have to be a straight line from pain to no pain, right? Um, I, I think that yeah. goes a, real, uh, a, a really long way. Absolutely. I mean, you, know, you, you, you just gave, you just gave the physical therapist out there a cheat code, right? Like that's what it feels like. You know, when, when you get, when, when somebody tells you um, these things, you know, a physical therapist or another physical therapist and how you can use it, you know, with a patient, it's, it's a cheat code. And I think that that's, that's what you're giving to um, your patients when you're identifying potential barriers, potential issues, because as soon as they start coming up with those is excuses, uh, they're like, oh, nope, PT already called that one out. You know, now I know that I can trust them, right? They knew this was coming. I'm at this spot and I'm going to, you know, choose a, a different pathway for myself so I can continue to get better. So I, I, I love that. I think it's huge. It's awesome. Okay. So. You have your mentorship, um, you have your analytics, which is, which is a super cool position. A any other um, recent positions kind of open up in the evolution tree? There, there's people certainly dabbling in a few. Um, there, there's some people who are dabbling in, in some politics stuff, you know, um, you know, policy change, that sort of thing. So I see them, you know, popping up on our internal communication devices saying like, hey, so, you know, sign this bill, send this out to your congressman, like that kind of stuff. I think that's a that's a really important one for private practice and, and how we're continuing to go through this thing. So we'll see if that develops into to something larger for that particular person and, you know, how they kind of, you know, work through that. Um, uh, leadership positions, you know, and, and when I say leadership positions, I don't mean from a, um, from a clinical director perspective or from a mentorship pr perspective. I, I mean, people who are helping teach leadership to our company. Um, I, you know, I think that's again, like something that is pretty innate in, in some people, it's not innate in all people. It's, it's learned in a lot of people. Uh, some people just have it. And I think using those skills, like, again, like, I don't care if you're not the clinical director, in the clinic, like you can still be a leader in that clinic. And that, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So, um, you know, identifying those people, identifying those skill sets and, and trying to figure out how we, you know, level set that across the country, uh, uh, across the company is really important. Um, and then I think your that company, there's your company at this point is across the country. So that <laughs> yes, it slip. is. And and uh, and oddly in states that start with the letter C, I don't know what like complex that I have that decided to uh, you know keep that going, but <laughs> something Carolinas maybe right next. Yeah, oh, it's Carolinas. I was going to go Chicago. Okay, so um, <laughs> okay, so t tell me this. Well, answer me this. What happens when a clinician says? Mike, I'm, I'm going to be an awesome clinic director. I'm going to be an awesome analytics. And you're like, mm, you're, you're not good for that position. How do you handle that? Yeah, I think it's, I, I think again, it's the importance of having, you know, really regular conversations with um, your staff and, and knowing a lot about them. Because if it, if it got to the point where, somebody, somebody really felt like they were awesome for that role. And I hadn't intervened before that to try to help steer them in a different direction. I would think that I missed something in that process. Um, so, you know, I think that there is a lot of importance of regular check-ins. Like I think maybe it's the norm and in a lot of companies do like a yearly review or something like that. Uh, we, we make it a point to check in with 
all of our physical therapists once a week. Um, and then we do um, a little bit more of a serious check-in um, every quarter with them to really make sure that we're establishing goals, making sure that those goals are obtainable um, and, and making sure that we're working towards them. So I feel like we would we would catch some of that a little early on and then kind of, you know, relay that up the chain, down the chain, like wh whatever it may be, um, and, and start to come up with an intervention strategy to figure out what that person, you know, could do instead. Because I think that's, that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's never a, it's never a no. I, I think it's like, okay, well, if, if you want to do that, like, you know, here's some books to read, here's some training that we need to do with you to, to see if that happens. Um, you know, again, you said it before, like, I've made mistakes at putting people in the wrong roles. And sometimes that happens. And I would assume that that's, you know, going to happen again. Um, but the, the key is how do you if you make that mistake? How do you pivot out of it? How do you how do you stop from making the mistake? Like, those are things that I think we're learning every day. And in, in just like our identification process of that, um, I, I'm not sitting here saying that we're spot on saying that we're making the right decision every single time. Um, but I think we're, we're even if we make the mistake, we're able to identify the mistake and then start to, you know, figure out how to how to get out of it. Yeah, uh, I'll give you a very clear example of a mistake that I made was hiring specifically because a therapist played a sport at a very high level. Um, I used to think like that was the most important thing in the world. Like I want to hire um, a D1 basketball player so he can treat ba other basketball players. I, I look for it but it's not an end all. So, so that was like a clear mismatch. Another thing was graduating from, from highly ranked institutions. Um, I think I learned that even quicker, what a mistake that was, which is why like, I almost cringe when I call someone's reference and they say, oh, they're so smart. I'm like, I'd, I'd rather dumb. Tell, tell me they're dumb yeah. because they're gonna do better. <laughs> but but those, those, are, those, <laughs> those are mistakes that, that I've made. I share that to hopefully make it a safe space for you to tell me um, a very concrete mistake that you've made uh, either business-wise or clinical-wise. Yeah. yeah, this is fun, man. It's, it's, we get on here and we just talk about all the, all the mistakes <laughs> that we made all we day. Are. You know, it's, it's, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy. Um, I just it's easy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, yeah, it is. I mean, it's, I mean, when you identify them, it's good. At, and honestly, like it, it also like creating that space at all, it, it opens up for people to understand like, Hey, like mistakes, are going to happen like it's okay yeah. it's, it's how you how you get out of them that that really you know truly proves how, how you kind of make the next thing um you know work for you so you know you know i think putting people in positions um that we talked about before is certainly a mistake but I'll, I'll tell you probably the main one that that i've made uh when it comes to the hiring process and it's it's hiring out of need versus out of want and i i think that those are two very different things um, that, again, different spaces that your company can be in. And because the majority of the PT hires that were mistakes that we've made, when I look back, it's like, we just needed a physical therapist so bad. And then we just yeah. pulled the trigger on somebody because we're like, oh crap, we're like losing money because we don't, we have all these patients that we need to get in and we need another physical therapist. And we're like, first person that comes down the pipeline, we're like, Hey, if you're going to say yes to me, I'm going to say yes to you. And, and we're going to kind of get you in, in, in this fold. Um, and that honestly has every time like bitten us in the ass. And I think, you know, now from a recruiting perspective, we try to actually stay like a couple therapists ahead of the game. Like we, we don't necessarily need a physical therapist, but when we find the people that we want, we're like, Hey, join our team. Like, you know, we think that you're going to be great. Um, hop on board because I think then we get a better product in the end. Um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's sometimes a little harder in the wallet, right? Like it's, it's a little harder in, in the growth tra trajectory. But I think when you look at that over time, you're always happier that you had somebody who you wanted in a place rather than trying to figure out what to do with somebody who just doesn't fit with your team, um, you know, and, and figure out what the next steps are there. Yeah, I think that's that's really good advice. Um, I've definitely been there. When when you're doling out this priceless advice, what advice do you give to uh, maybe a smaller clinic that's just beginning to think about offering um, other opportunities, larger career ladders, or, or other career trajectories? What should they be thinking about first and foremost? 
I think that they should be very introspective in what they want. Uh, you know, I think that that's important. Like when you're, when you're thinking about even like a passion project for yourself, I think it, you know, it can take time to develop that. Um, so we're not normally asking people who are, you know, three months out of school, like, you know, you need to identify this passion product right now and you, you need to figure out which rung of this ladder you're going to climb right now. It's because I do think it, it, it takes time to develop that. So I do think that they need to be really introspective um, with themselves about understanding what they really like. Um, and, and I like this question because um, it was asked of me in, in the business space, but it's how do you want to spend your day, right? Like, Asking yourself that question and figuring out the answer to it, that might mean like, I want to treat these types of patients. It might mean like, I want 20% of my stuff to be working on management and business stuff or 20% of my stuff to be working on mentorship and education. Um, figuring that out and how you want to spend your day will be immensely important um, to how you carry yourself throughout your career. Um, so, so those are the main things that people should be thinking about as they're starting to, to develop into, you know, I guess the the career trajectory that that they're trying to accomplish, um, and then they they need support of people around them to to help encourage them to to kind of lean into that stuff. Um, you know, so so those are probably the the full circle things that they need to go through. Mike, the reason I like that answer from what you just said is it's exactly what you did when you were starting out. You looked at all the things that were kind of available to you. You looked at what you wanted and you made the decision, hey, I want to go down this path. And that is all you're asking your therapist to do. That's all you're asking uh, your team members to do is just that take a step back and realize where you want to go with your career. Um, and then the, the only thing maybe that I would add to that would be figure out how you're going to get there and not just expect it to happen. And it sounds like you do a great job of, uh, and I, I don't mean this, um, in, in a, um, denigrating way, you hold the hand of the therapist to help them get to whatever it is that they want to get to. And that's the beautiful thing about what you've created evolution with these, these career ladders. Does that sum it up? Don't let me put words in your mouth. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think you said it right there is, you know, we, we give them the tools that they need to make it happen for themselves. And then we support them to make it happen. And I, like I've said this, for so long that I, I feel like that there's so many really great physical therapists out there um, in the world, in, the, in this country, all over the place. Um, but I don't think that there's a lot of really great physical therapy systems out there who help encourage their therapists how to continue to grow. I mean, a lot of them, you know, help them grow in the way of being a physical therapist. But like, how do you grow in these other ways? How do you make your life really fulfilling? Uh, fulfilling and, and meaningful and, you know, all those things. And that, that, that means something different to every person. And so if we, if we can be a small part of that, if we can be even just kind of like the, you know, you know, the, the open ears saying like, let's talk about it, let's figure out how to make this happen for you, then, you know, I'm all for that. And I'm all for making that happen for people. Um, not everybody's the same. And when you have a big company, I mean, we we're up to maybe 60 PTs at this point, like, not every one of them wants to do the exact same thing. So I think it would be a disservice to our physical therapists if we weren't trying to do this and weren't trying to figure out how to allow them to keep growing. Um, and, and again, I'll say this and I, I mean, no, um, I mean, no disrespect to physical therapists who are, who are a bit older out there, but like, you know, I don't see too many 65 year old physical therapists, right? Like, what what are they doing? Like when you get 15, 20 years into this career, like you see so many people transitioning on to other things that are outside of the clinic or they're only doing like top level management, like that kind of thing. And it's like, how can you continue to grow as a physical therapist? If you still want to be treating patients, like let's have you keep treating patients. Like if you only made that other decision because it was going to affect you in the, in the pocketbook, like how can we change that for you? Um, how can we, how can we make something different happen? How can we build a different company that allows you to do that? So those are all really important things for me. Yeah, that, that's, that's really clear. That's really cool. Um, Mike, I always like to wrap up with a little bit of a lightning round. So just give me those answers as soon as I'm done asking the question. You ready? Yeah. Who's the best lacrosse, who is the best lacrosse player you've ever seen play? 
Mike, no deep breaths, no pausing. God, just you answer. So I hard. ask, you answer. Uh, yeah, One name. Uh, Paul, Paul Rabel. Oh, uh, okay, fine. Um, okay, biggest celebrity you've ever met. Don't say Paul Rabel. Yeah, no. Um, God. Sean Kingston? Sean Kingston. Everyone knows Sean Kingston. Famous for... You know, beautiful Sean. girl, Jamaican hip hop. Let's go. <laughs> Jamaican hip hop. Okay, should have known that. Okay, um, I figured like California, you would have pulled like I don't know, like Steven Tyler or um, Mick Jagger. I, I feel okay. Sean Kingston. Cool. No, Mike? not not. Yeah, I, hey, that's a pretty big rapper. You know, you got you know we got to okay. we got to also stay HIPAA compliant here right now. That's fair. Okay, fair. Also, shame on me for not knowing Sean Kingston. Apologies. Um, okay. <laughs> you're going to um, look up his songs and you're going to be like, all right, now I know. I'm doing it right now. Um, okay, best advice to a new graduate physical therapist? Uh, figure out what you're passionate about and do that every single freaking day. Love it. Um, best advice to a new private practice owner? Uh, learn what you're not good at and find that, put other good people around you that, that can help you figure that out. Yeah. Create a team. I love it. Um, what does PT look like in 10 years? Uh, I think it's a big blend between strength and conditioning and rehab services. I, you know, I think, you know, you walk into a place and you don't know who's doing what, you know, and, and people are respecting each other, you know, both ways and everybody's doing it for the best interest of the athlete. Love it. Um, best book you've read in the last five years, not written by Jocko Willink. Four Disciplines of Execution. Bye. Ooh. Uh, by whom? I'm looking at my bookshelf to see who the author is. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. Great. Um, okay. Advice you would give to a 26 year old Mike Giunta? Stay the course, uh, work hard, you know, uh, say yes to opportunities. I love that. Say yes to opportunities. Okay. Parting advice. The last thing you want to share, um, with all of the sports PTs across the country that are listening to this. Um, learn multiple systems for treating patients. Um, you know, don't pigeonhole yourself to one way of thinking because you miss all the people that don't fall into that system. So, you know, I definitely encourage you to develop your own system that's made up of, you know, all these different ones that you learn over the course of your career um, and never stop learning, you know, keep on that you, you can learn something from every single person, you know, multiple, multiple multidisciplinary approach is, is always key. Um, I take something from every single situation that I'm in. I, you know, I'm so thankful for all the, um, other physical therapists out there that I've learned from. Um, there are certain physicians who have taught me nothing about the medical or they, they've taught me about medical, but I, I think the most important thing that they've helped talk to me or teach me is how to talk to patients. Um, and, and those were some of the most invaluable and, uh, you know, pieces of advice that I've ever gotten. Um, you know, so I think you just have to keep your ears open, listen to different people and, you know, make sure that you're taking something from every single situation you find yourself in. Even if it's, even if you think it's a waste of time, like turn that attitude around and, and figure out what you can take from it. Pat, Mike, powerful stuff, outstanding tidbits, unbelievable knowledge that you just shared with me, shared, shared with the entire audience hearing that you are up to 60 physical therapists with practices across the entire country and that you still sound hungry as ever to grow and to improve and really your approachability since i met you just unbelievably approachable open transparent um speaking of transparency i just went through like an hour of technical difficulties and there's mike giunta just patiently waiting for me to return once i get the internet back up and rolling I, the humility uh, really knows no bounds, and I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time. I appreciate all you've taught me, all you've taught the audience. Where can everyone find you on social, and how do they get a hold of you? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, always open to email. I mean, Mike at evolution-pt.com is, is my email. Super easy. My Instagram for the company is at evolution PT fit. My personal one is at Mike Junta PT. Um, so all super easy ones to, to find. Um, DM me, shoot me an email, all those sorts of things work. We're kind of paying attention to everything at this point and, and seeing them all come through. I love connecting with uh new physical therapists and even if, even if nothing else just kind of learning about their stories and understanding more about them um you know i i have this philosophy that um none of us physical therapy companies out there should be really competing with one another we we should really just be out there helping teach people what physical therapy is because if we do that and we do that really well collectively there's going to be plenty of patients out there for all of us to treat uh, because there's so many different things that we can work on with these people so um, that's really important to me so that the more people that i can get in front of and, and kind of share that vision share that understanding um, even if they don't work for my company or a company you know like true sports that, that i you know obviously really respect and, and admire you and everything that you've done and all your physical therapists that you have there. Um, maybe they can take that philosophy to, to a different company, you know, and, and help some more people and help some more people understand how we can really enjoy this. Cause the PT profession is, is a weird thing. You know, it's, it's a weird, weird world that we've gotten ourselves into. Um, but it can be really fun if you let it. Yeah. Oh, good advice, dude. Mike, as always, thanks for your time. Can't wait to keep learning from you. As always, I'm going to ask you for a favor. Please listen, learn, and share our content. And leave us a five-star review wherever you consume your true sports pod. That little act of kindness will go a very long way to helping us and helping our profession. You can reach out directly to me with feedback on the pod, what you loved, what you didn't love, and who you want to hear from. Also, if you want to join our team of outstanding sports PTs, shoot me a DM on Instagram at True Sports PT or email me directly, Yoni, Y O N I, at True Sports PT.com. Because after all, this is what sports rehab should be. Look forward to hearing from you all soon.